Okay guys, we're doing some annual annual maintenance and uh, I know the generator was running a little rough so we're going to uh, change the oil uh, in order for it to uh, to run. It's gotta do it's gonna do a hard a hard day's work because we're gonna use it to actually heat up the sauna because we need it warm in there while we tile. Make sure our equipment's running well. We don't want the thin set to freeze before it dries. So this is going to be running our heaters, our grinders, everything we need to do to install the tile. Make sure our machines are working properly. I have very limited knowledge when it comes to uh, small engines and whatnot, but I do know that this is a common problem for a lot of small engines breaking or not working, is the spark arresters. Now this is just a screen and it basically catches, I guess, sparks that come out the back, prevent forest fires and whatnot. So all, most small engines have them, either on chainsaws or whippersnippers or whatnot. And it's a fine little screen. And sometimes like it'll start and then it'll just kind of like not have enough oomph. And it's because the exhaust isn't getting out of the muffler. So if you take these apart, you can see that there's, there's, there's black on there, there's a little carbon buildup. So you, you use a torch and you basically burn it off. And uh, that allows it to be clean and the exhaust gets out and your engine works like brand new. You see a lot of engines that the people are like, I can't deal with that. That's the first thing to check is that spark arrester. Okay guys, we're all maintenanced up. We've got our oil changed. We checked our air filter. We checked our screen on our uh, spark arrester. We're all ready to rock. So much like everything, when you do something, it's always a pain in the butt. So I dropped the screw down in there, but I don't have a magnet. So I'm going to make one out of a magnet. Let's see, the magnet won't get in there. So I'm going to do is magnetize this nail. I'm sure you guys did this in science class, right? So you're lining all the, I don't know, you're lining something and magnetizing a giant nail. And then if I can get the nail, can I see it? There. There's the nail. Let's see, I kind of... Just enough. Just enough to get it out. All right, so we've gone through the process of getting everything set up. Uh, as you can see, the back wall is not done, and that actually works to our advantage because we can uh, tile a little looser. We don't have to get our tile right up against the wall. We can kind of, you know, because the wall is going to go over top of the tile. The plan is to now heat up the space, heat up the floor, heat up basically everything we can in order to keep it nice and warm, kind of give it a little bit of thermal mass. Uh, we're starting off at uh, with 33.8 Fahrenheit. Ideally it's 10 degrees. Again, we're not in an ideal situation because we are in the forest. We're tiling a floor in the forest, which is, is the first for me, like it's the first for Dawn. We're gonna see how it works. We've got uh, some special product we're gonna use. We're, we're, dry, we're drying out some wood. All right, so we're, uh, we've got some uh, interesting stuff that we're going to be putting on the floor, which is the uh, the Schluter company makes this, it's a detro membrane, it's a decoupling membrane. It's also a waterproofing membrane. As you know, saunas get a little bit wet and we want to protect our subfloor underneath our tile because as you guys may or may not know, that tile and grout is not necessarily waterproof. The tile itself is waterproof, grout is not necessarily waterproof. So if you're ever doing a, uh, you know, floor in a, in a wet room, like a shower or a bathroom, this stuff's great, this Schluter, Schluter stuff for uh, waterproofing your floor. It also acts as a decoupling membrane. Your tiles feel warmer if you're actually putting it on, like even if you're in your basement on a concrete floor, if you put this Dietra stuff down on top of the concrete, it actually keeps your tile warmer than it would be if you just put your tile directly on concrete. And in this situation, it'll provide warmth from the floor below. Okay, so what we're using to set this stuff down is a, uh, what is it, uh, 11 square notch trowel. And we mix our thin set a little soupy in order for it to actually impregnate itself into the fibers on the bottom of the schluter Dietra membrane. So there's like little furs under here. Okay, so once we've got the Dietra down, I use a grout float and I'm pushing the, the Dietra into the thin set like this. Now it's personal preference whether or not you want to lay your tiles lengthwise in the room or perpendicular to the lengthwise in the room. And in this case, for ease of installation, I am going to go perpendicular to the room. I don't necessarily like doing this. I like to go the long size of the tile, the length of the room. So my tiles are one by twos. I have a number of different colors tiles. So it's kind of like a patchwork tile. They're all kind of in the same similar family. They're all kind of like grayish beige. 
this was remnants from my uh, my favorite tile store, Bigelow Flooring. They were like, hey, Kevin, you want this tile? I'm like, yes, I do. But the only thing is, is they don't quite match together. So this is the perfect kind of opportunity to use it. And the tile that I cut off on this side, I'm gonna add on that side and I'm gonna carry on. I'm not going to follow any specific grout line. If you can do a random pattern, make sure you stay random. Don't do not random and then random because it'll look funny. So if you're gonna go random, commit to it. What I'm gonna do in this particular situation, because my back wall is not exactly square and it tends to, at the end of your tiling job, if you didn't start off square, you're gonna have a bad time. So what I'm gonna do is measure off the back wall and start my level straight line at the back. Otherwise, when I get to my door, it's gonna be janky. We're at the point now where we've got to put the last tiles in. And the last tile happens to be at the doorway. Usually, or sometimes when people do this, they actually butt the tile up against the door jamb. I don't like doing that. I like to slide my tile underneath the door jamb. So in order to do that, what I do is I actually take a tile, I put it up against the door jamb, I add cardboard underneath to mimic my thin set, and that gives me the height I want to cut it at. Interesting story. When I was doing the firewood collection video, you guys can actually look back on that. Looking for firewood. It was in the, the back of a parking lot. Somebody had just junked it and I picked it up. This is a tile finishing edge. So when you have a rough cut of an edge, you actually slide your tile and it gives you your, your finished edge like that. Well guys, I think we really lucked out today because of the weather. I hear there's a polar vortex coming and you couldn't do this much colder than it is now. We've got our generator just humming. We've got our little space heater, which is keeping our space well above freezing. It's about 10 degrees Celsius in there. 10 degrees Celsius or 43.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So we, because the door is open. Anyways, I'm going to close this thing up. I'm going to leave it overnight. I'm going to let the generator run out of gas and uh, hopefully keep it warm and hopefully, like I said, hopefully it dries before it freezes. Well, while we sit around for that tile to dry, let's see if we can either A, make something or B, break something. I've got the old, that old boiler I picked up and I'm gonna chop it up and see if I can actually make it to look like a stove or the uh, the heater for the sauna. Just to get a little disclaimer here, I'm not a metal worker. I'm more of a woodworker than anything else. This is possibly the third or fourth thing I've ever built using steel. I did make a rocket stove at one point. That was many, many years ago. I haven't really touched stuff since, uh, but uh, we're gonna cut this thing up and uh, see where we're at. I. I I'm curious to see what's inside of it. I'm uh, curious to see if it's actually going to work. So let's uh, let's get started cutting this thing apart. So my plan with this guy is to make a small incision down the middle and then cut the sides all the way around to where it goes up. And then what I'm going to do is actually take this and open it up and it gives me a nice big platform for rocks.
now that we've got the sides straightened up, you can kind of start seeing what I've kind of envisioned is that it gives a nice big tray here to actually add rocks and you can add it right around the firebox. Originally, this was inside a house as a boiler for actually heating hot water for radiator system or in-floor heating or whatever. So there's ports here that I don't need. So what I'm going to do is cut these guys off. What I'm using to weld this thing is my Lincoln Easy MIG 140. What does that mean? I don't know, it's a welder. It's red, it's got, you know, it says Lincoln Electric on the side. I think I picked it up from my local hardware store a while back, because I was like, I want to stick things together. So I bought a welder. Do I want anything more than that? No, I don't. I do know that it just sticks metal together. It's my glue gun for sticking metal together. Now that we've got the sides all welded up, the next step is to make a door. So my thoughts are on this guy, is if I take this thing, does everybody have a chunk of, you know, circle? A circle piece of steel kicking around? So I've acquired this many years ago, and I think it's the, uh, it's, it's the discarded chunk from a, like a plasma cutter, cutting chunks. And I'm like, these are cool wheel things. So I grabbed them all and I got a perfect opportunity to use it. So my plan is to actually take this guy and attach it there as a door. And I think the damper control is gonna be whether or not I just leave the door open a little bit or close the door. Now I've gotta fashion somewhat of a hinge in there somehow. Maybe I'll just tack it in. Friction fit. And then what I can do afterwards is put a giant rope gasket around the perimeter and that gives me my seal. Now I just gotta fashion a hinge. My limited knowledge of welding basically comes down to clean where you're gonna weld. So grind off any kind of paint, any kind of debris, kind of like soldering. I'm more of a uh, glue stick approach. I'm gonna fill it with whatever this metal is. I've never really took a trade school or, or uh, you know, a welding class in my life. I just basically thought I wanna stick metal together. So what I did was I bought a welder and I started sticking metal together. Am I good at it? Yeah, I don't know, stuff doesn't fall apart. Is it pretty? Sorta. My, my motto is, you know, do your best and grind the rest. Walk across it, I think you can weld it. I don't know, there's a pretty big gap. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna actually clean up the, uh, the area where I'm gonna weld. When you open the door, the smoke tends to want to billow out into your face because the chimney is basically at eye level with the top of the opening of the door. So what I'm going to do is actually add a, <clears throat> a piece of steel that's going to go and basically create like a pocket where the smoke can pool at the top of the firebox and then out the chimney. If you didn't do this, every time you open the door, you'd have smoke coming out the front. If you look at your stove, if you do have a stove, when you open the door, there's a little piece of metal that sticks down and that's to encourage the smoke to go up the chimney as opposed to out in your face. I didn't quite anticipate it working as well as it does. I've got my little wooden handle, the door swings like it's nothing. Got my little smoke deflector. Got my space for my rocks. I was told to get about 100 kg, 100 kilograms of rock. This thing is gonna heat. I, I could probably heat the sauna with the door open. 
this is going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for this thing to see how well this thing is going to work. I'm going to bring it someplace warm to, to clean it off because there is some sludge that was inside the boiler crud that, that accumulates in radiators and stuff like that. Give it a good scrubbing with some hot water before I fire it up, before I put my rocks in for the, uh, the actual final destination in the sauna. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, she's ready for paint. Get a nice coat of uh, stove, black stove paint on this thing. It's gonna look like a million bucks. I like the way it looks. I like how it's kind of like steampunkish. Steampunkish, ha <laughs> ha, steam. Anyways, but yeah, it's very, I like it. I like this, it's substantial. The whole thing, it weighs a ton or a couple hundred pounds, but it's, it, it's, it's gonna hold the heat. I think you light that bad boy up, you put a nice, you know, right size fire in there, you fire it up once and it's gonna hold the heat. You're gonna be able to, be able to cook on this bad boy. We've got the uh, stove down, we're gonna do the uh, the inaugural burn, the inaugural burn on the boiler converted to wood stove sauna heater. I'm gonna burn off all the whatever's left of it. I did end up power washing the outside, got rid of all the, uh, I guess the crud from the, uh, the existing boiler system. So that's pretty darn clean. Um, I've got to heat up the, the sauna itself because I want to grout today. So uh, I'm gonna use the generator for that. It's minus 11, the winter has settled in, I believe. See if we can get this thing heated up. We're probably, we're aiming at about 10 degrees inside so the grout doesn't freeze while it dries. Yeah, working in the, working in the winter's fun. Well guys, I'm pretty impressed with that. I think it's working as I planned it working. I've got a temporary pipe rigged up at the back just so it's got enough draft to actually pull it up and out and uh it seems to be working really well it's just i like i said i wanted to test fire it without putting it inside the uh inside the sauna beforehand and uh the burn is really nice like it's a nice gentle burn almost and then and then i was throwing some snow on it and uh you can see it just kind of vaporized it right away uh once i've got the pop filled up with rocks i think it'll work even better because uh it'll give it more surface area it'll it'll have a basically more opportunity to just kind of just vaporize what do they call that and and, and finish with it lowly, 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 uh, it's L-O-Y-L-Y, with little two dots on top of there. Steam, that's what that means. There's gonna be sort of a MacGyvered chimney pipe installation on this. It's gonna be like a pipe and a pipe and a pipe, and I think three layers of pipe will give me enough thermal break that and then an airspace so it won't catch the wall on fire and uh, there's gonna be some uh, heat deflectors at the back of it in order to uh, again try to keep this thing from burning down it's not gonna burn down and also the back wall I'm going to put a section of cement board there so non-combustible material on the back wall to further prevent burning down also kind of gives me separation from the, uh, the wood it'll give me a little bit of a nice design thing as well because it's waterproof so when you if you do like you know overly ambitiously throw water at the thing and and uh have you know water splash at the back it's it'll be uh waterproof and then who knows maybe i'll tile it I, it's uh this is warming up now so i can i can hopefully grout today and get this thing in tomorrow again it's uh it's hot it's like uh this, it vaporizes snow it takes it from what's that what's that science what's that science teacher that's uh sublimation when it goes from a solid ice to vapor without I guess it melts it really quick. I didn't pay attention much in school. Can you tell? Okay, well, well that thing actually, it's, it's actually keeping the outside really moderate. If it was level, that would stay closed. And then I'm waiting for a rope gasket. I just got that thing on order. So the rope gasket will go around the, the perimeter to kind of give it more efficiency. So when you want to dampen it down, you basically close the door. And when you don't want to dampen it, and you want to just red or rip, you just open her up and then this full oxygen combustion. Like I said, it's working really well. I did not. I didn't expect it to work this good. Well, sometimes they just work out. It's foggy in here. It's probably because the humidity is at like 86%. It's, uh, I'm grouting. I'm just cleaning the, uh, the floor. You can, you can kind of see it. Anyways, it, there's a lot of humidity probably because I, I brought the camera in from outside and it was minus uh, you know, 10 and now it's, uh, it's 12.5 degrees in here, but it's foggy. All right, well, I'm gonna keep cleaning up the grout and maybe my camera will stop being foggy near the end.
Take your shoes off when you're in the house. You even got non-slip coating, feels like, anyway. Well, that's just more... Hey, Bean, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Bean? Is it awesome? It's awesome. He's like, when is it going to be warm? When is it going to be warm, Bean? It's big pipe day. We've got our big pipe. We're going to put a chimney on Jupiter. That's our plan. We've got, uh, what is it, 7-inch insulated pipe. It's the really, really heavy stuff. And we're going to put a 5-inch pipe in that, and we're going to put a 6-inch pipe over that, and then we're going to put it in the 7-inch pipe, and then it's going to go up the roof. Went down to about minus 13, and then it shot up to 1 degree, which is ideal. Well, it's not ideal, but the floor looks awesome. Now we can walk on it. Okay, so now we're at this stage of the uh, stove installation. We're going to create what I call a little bump out. It's going to be a non-combustible bump out. It's going to be made of cement board and steel stud. So there's nothing burn, singe, or char. And then uh, at a future date, we're going to tile the front of it to make it look pretty. So it's almost like a, like a thermal break between anything combustible. As far as we got, we got the pipe, five inch pipe inside another two layer pipe inside an actual stove pipe, which is a, uh, it's basically stainless steel on the outside, stainless steel on the inside. And it's filled with I believe vermiculite or some sort of other kind of non-combustible material and that is is really it's proper it's proper stovepipe which i'm not i don't use very often because i don't i don't seem to have it very often but good the story behind this pipe is actually my good friend lane up north she uh she bought a house and uh she opted to get rid of her wood stove in the basement and this was a pipe that went from her basement all the way to the second story and beyond the roof and she was like yeah you can have it if you can take it down and one july day it had to be i don't know a million degrees outside and and her roof is really pitchy and i was lugging that thing down by myself and and questioning my position in life going what am i ever going to use this thing for and uh so yeah it's a sauna sauna chimney now thanks lane why is this pipe so heavy So we're at the end of the day, and I'm pretty excited to light this thing up. And I want to see what kind of draw it's going to get. That's really what I want to see, to make sure that there's enough draw. I think there's going to be tons of draw. You can kind of feel the draft now. You can feel it's actually getting sucked out in up the chimney. So we're just going to do a small fire just to make sure everything's good. And, uh, yeah, we're well on our way to have our sauna. This has worked out better than I thought it was going to. It was kind of so, junk. It was somebody else's junk. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna have a long life. Long life in the in the sauna. Like that thing is working perfect. I like the draft. I think you got to build the right size fire in this thing. It's not like a you know. Make sure when you get guests over, they know that you're only supposed to build the right size fire. We'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna put some interior cladding on and hopefully get this thing buttoned up on the inside. You know, another cool feature is the threshold is straight so you can just sweep this thing right out the door anytime i have some free time i come out here and nail up some wood so we had uh we had a little test fire over the weekend and uh we've discovered a couple of uh, issues well just one primary issue the, the, the successes at first is that the stove works exceptionally well we had we had it up well over 45 degrees Celsius. I know I know that's a far cry from 70 or 70 to 90 Celsius, which I guess the, the saunas are supposed to be at, but like as a ginger, 50 Celsius, that's pretty good. I don't know, I was in there for about, you just go in there longer, right? So the ash that we put in here exactly, it was milled, it was dead standing, and then we installed it. What we discovered is it's drying out. So it seems to be like the wider planks on this back wall, if you can take a close look at this stuff. It's a little wonky. I can stick my hand back behind here. You can see it's kind of moving. It's because it's drawing and cupping. And, and the wider the board, the tendency to, to cup is, is greater because it's got a more of a surface area. So if you were to cut them down, you'd have less cupping. That's why we see on the ceiling, there is, you know, almost 
no cupping. And if there is cupping, it's actually working to our advantage because the ceiling is round. So what I'm going to do at the back wall here is actually remove some of these boards that are actually at the back wall and actually put more bracing on and uh, add some screws at uh, closer intervals to actually pull it, pull the bend out of it. And then I will tighten the screws over the day and flatten out that board. We're gonna just add some more steam in here because it is a it is a steam sauna. So yeah, so that's the plan for today is to basically flatten this back wall out. I've got uh, I've got a number of battens cut. I don't know 33 battens because I've got to cover all the little cracks, and uh, we've got window build outs to do, trim to do. I think, uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, join me on the next one.